All right, we are back. Hopefully this works. Um, I am on my new computer rig and uh, I've been, it's been a rather odd day today. It's been rather curious. I've been, um, well, I've, I've, I've sort of been in a tussle with a certain thinker of ironies. And let me just say that I had great content with this person on BTR and elsewhere. Followed the guy for a good six years, but I guess, I guess, uh, I'm, I'm a very naughty and bad boy that will have zero growth because I decided to, uh, post a few memes about this certain thinker of ironies not, um, being willing to, uh, how shall I say, Admit to not uh, reading certain things. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. I will never speak his name. Well, I don't know never, but I will try not to speak his name. But we are here today to read one of the worst threads I have ever witnessed in my life. No, I do not mean my friend Evan Platinum. Shout out to my boy. Go <laughs> don't look up from all bridge go and follow him on twitter and of course follow me on twitter geo's no growth aesthetic corner giant geo at twitter.com um please like share subscribe for this cheap ass bottom of the barrel lowest common denominator content my god uh I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, please like, share, subscribe, donate, all that good stuff. I'm trying to pump myself up here because we are going to read the terrible, atrocious thread about the early internet and, and uh, millennials and Zoomers. And let me just go to, first of all, let me just go to a tweet. Let me go to it. Um, that Where is it? by my good friend Vile. Here we go. Just like boomers destroyed the economy for all generations to come, millennials destroyed the culture for all generations to come. They are not victims. They deserve everything they've done to themselves. Because of you, my entire generation and every generation after will have to pretend to believe things about history and biology that are palpably untrue due to the threat of state slash or corporate reprisal. I said we literally deserve everything we get. It's very true. Us millennials, we accelerated in, in some ways the trends that were already happening from Gen Z. But we do we truly do deserve everything we get. We we came with the uh state enforced culture camp, certain countries more than others. People don't know this, but a lot of millennial culture, from the music to the politics to the Tumblr bullshit, came from Canada, came from Ontario near the GTA specifically. And uh, that just says it all right there, having grown up in it. Um, us millennials, we really did poison Zoomers. And Zoomers are now nostalgic for uh, the late to early two th late 90s, early 2000s periods that they never lived through, which is kind of uh, odd in itself. But here we are going to read one of the bottom of the barrel worst threads I've ever read in my life. Uh, threat is awful, but the worst part is believing 1996 dial-up modern internet is comparable with the weaponized psychopolitical gamified Skinner box mind nuke meme hell panopticon Heil the new flesh present day internet. They're not in the same galaxy. This doesn't even touch on the fact that the phones are now mobile computers more powerful than anything in the 90s and that Zoomers and those younger grew up plugged in literally everywhere they went or the constant internet use is a societal requirement these, day, these days. And then, of course, Matthew Lassell, my good friend, he recently came back to Twitter. Go and follow you. Sorry. Go and follow Matthew the Stout, my good, good friend. He is one of my dearest, best friends. I have about five or six or so in my life I consider best friends. He is one of them. Uh... Yeah, as the hellscape of days are the same way chewing coca coca leaves is being mining crack cocaine. Oh, oh, oh boy. So let's read the thread, and I'm going to try to break down the 
significance and intergenerational, like, let's call it mind psyop that millennials have inflicted on Zoomers. So right off the bat, when you say, hi, millennial here, when you say, hi, expert here, you lose it. Let's look at this person's, uh, oh my God. Let's look at the Avi. Oh my God. Oh! She's the one, you know, back in the day, the library, the librarian had this mystique to her, the younger librarian. That's kind of like a Becky, you know, kind of like they, they have some sort of an appeal to them, but it's buried underneath this demure intellectualism. Now the librarian is just a horrible crowd, a horrible crow that uh, scolds you, not just for talking too loud, but also for um, using the wrong pronouns. Disaster human. Well, yep, there you go. Weed ant. Wow. So do you, what is a weed ant? Do you like grow? Is that what it is? 800 year old swamp witch. Yep. Eldritch whore. Oh yeah. Anti-censorship radical. She, oh, see they, um, anti-censorship radical. Oh, wow. Well, you'll see that censorship just means like anything that prevents the total collapse of the new sphere of civilization. And, uh, yeah, it's just, that's what they mean. Let me go over here. For, yep. That, so that's basically what they mean. So let's see when you say hi, like, hi, I'm here. I just, I immediately discredit you because it's just this, uh, smug one up in ship, but it's like, it's like this Reddit inflection cadence to it. Like, hi, expert here, elder millennial, actually, and uh, we need to talk, Gen Z. When you say we need to talk, I'm like, listen, I'm considered a core millennial. I was born at the very end of 1992. I was technically supposed to be born in 93, but I'm considered what they, you know, core millennial. Uh, so <laughs> elder millennial, actually, uh, we need to talk, Gen Z. We need to talk. I'm sure you do. I know this may shock you, but we had a computer with internet access starting when I was almost Gen Z, was eight years old. You are not the first to grow up online. Um, okay, let's read, before I respond to that, let's read the, uh, and she did the courtesy of blanking it out. Oh my God, I maybe we might read the quote tweets because some of them are quite delicious. I wish people, I wish people realized that the people in the 20s currently speaking out against hypersexual internet culture aren't doing so because we're killjoys, but because we were the first generation of people who grew up fully online and we can see the da damage it's done to us. If you can't tell the difference between us and your puritanical conservative uncle, then that's on you. See, here's the thing. Here's where this poster the OG uh, screwed up because to them, there is no difference and you should just embrace it. Now you are your stuffy conservative uncle. I hate to say it. Just embrace it, bro. Just embrace it. And so much of the damage was done next by even partaking directly in the culture, in that culture, but by being desensitized to it, rather exposure and subject, subsequently losing our concept of healthy expectations and boundaries and being groomed by people we thought were our friends, we have normalized receiving unwanted sexual advances and comments slash opinions, and you get called a prude for telling someone not to be inappropriate with you. Now, my good friend, default friend, Catherine D, I know she's been receiving a lot of hate lately. Um, she talks about this quite frequently, about how the expectations of, like, 2010s millennial sex posi feminism in particular have really psy up a whole generation of younger people into thinking that their own sort of ritualized degradation is a positive thing. It is something to be lauded as a form of empowerment and that a lot of, uh, I've talked about this and I will do a follow up video, um, responding to some comments I got. But for now, I just thought that this thread was so enervating that I had to do something. So let's go. Uh, oh, oh my God. Let's go. So since we've established my credential, oh my. Ah! 
since we established my credentials of having being online since the early dot com era. Please understand why I'm laughing hysterically. It's almost like Chris Chan typing the letter. Like every time CWC, like he, he highlights. And you know, what's funny. My university notes actually do look like this because I found a way. Um, I didn't do short stops. I should have learned, but my short stop was if something was important to me, I would just type it in all caps. And I remember handing this uh, girl in my seminar once my notes and she's like, yeah, I, I got through it. Like your notes are literally verbatim the lecture, but I just, it was so confusing. I had to turn them off after a while. I go, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so hysterically at this point, at this post, <laughs> I should do the cat lady voice and not because it's funny, but because of how sad and profound, profoundly dangerous it is. Okay. Let's see. Profoundly dangerous. I'm getting upset now. Um, you, so ha, saying that we need more boundaries and saying that the total um, blasted through the eyeballs, mind rot of constant surface web, culture industry, advertising, corporate uh, corporatocratic nightmare that is the current like web 3.1 or web 4.1, I forget. Uh, that, that somehow saying that we need boundaries and maybe it's not good to be normalizing um, this constant edipalization of all life, this constant id, this constant libidinal exchange of paraphilic desire, that maybe it's not good to have a desiring machine turned on your mind, overloading your sensors all the time. No, that's dangerous because some people may get offended, I'm assuming. Some very ghoulish, terrible people. That's my moral judgment. Um... We established my credentials having been online since the year.com era. So, but this is what Evan was trying to say. This is what Evan was trying to say. You can't compare when we were kids going home on MSN Messenger and having like um, dial up modems and waiting forever to download a video from LimeWire. And, and, and you know, you can't compare that to having a cell phone literally more powerful than any of the computers back in the day that have constant access literally at your fingertips to not just the world, but to the seedier parts of it. I'm, I'm really sure that that's a good comparison. But as you can see, uh, the bio over here, you, you, you fully understand where this person's coming from. It's dangerous. I lived through, oh, I, oh, so millennials really had it hard by living through the early shock sites. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, this is like back um, last week on BTR, we had a uh, Turkey Tom on uh, with default friend with Billy. Oh, my, my good friend. Um, please go buy his book. Um, Welcome to hell. My good friend, Billy Pratt. We were talking about uh, CWC again, but we were also talking about um, the early internet and other things and sex positive feminism and stuff uh, and Zoomers and millennials. And uh, Turkey Tommy, he brought up that one cringe video when they were popular back in the day of that one guy who was responding to the Redditor who had the shirt that said blocks, blocks, blocks because of Minecraft. And the guy's like, oh, I, I know I'm a B-tard. I know I, I go on 4chan. This is literally what that is. I lived through rule 34 in the early 4chan days. No, you did. I can almost guarantee you, you were not posting on B back in the day. I, I'm sorry. Again, I, I'm, I'm sinking myself to that level of discourse, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of sure she didn't lurk on B when, when B was still, you know, a thing. The, the days of go goat see lemon party tub girl meets <laughs> meets been rotten.com college humor college hum oh my god yeah notice the one site that she doesn't list oh it's a she right yeah she they um the one site the zur doesn't list is uh <laughs> is is <laughs> is like on new grounds is there a new grounds? That was arguably more important. Uh, something awful. Those sites were arguably more um, radical and subversive and important than like 
one-off like single site shocks like, ooh, like what about uh hey hey you're the dog man is that what was that say called hey you're the dog guy you know the one that had uh all of the early um internet like single site um like the first incarnation of meme culture where they basically grouped together all of the different um single site memes the internet you see today it's the most sanitized and corporatized it's ever been Okay, let, let's okay, let's um break this down for a minute. Okay. <sighs> oh, there's a difference between the wild west of the internet of yesteryear. And notice how she's talking about 2010s internet. She's not really talking about um early 2000s like Usenet forums and chat rooms and like erotic uh, text-based sites that had horrendous texts you could still like dig up she's not talking about geocities that had all sorts of things that were um let's let's see the first perverts of the internet discovered that they could post things um of ill repute she's uh, there's a difference between that that was relatively niche and obscure and relatively barred off from like most normies and nowadays where it is true that this internet is more sanitized than ever in terms of certain forms of content, but when it comes to the most mainstream of platforms, when it comes to things that actually damage the social fabric, especially when it comes to younger people, then they're like, not only they condone, but they're promoted, you know, like only fans and pornography and, and just, um, the most subversive political ideological nonsense you could ever imagine is now mainstream, right? Like, I forget who tweeted it, but again, default friend, she hit the nail on the head with it. But there was someone that tweeted um, her similar way of thinking where it said, you know, all this stuff back in the 4chan days in 2015, all the stuff we made fun of on Tumblr, that's now public policy. So there you go. But, th but that's a dream to a person like this. I use the term person lightly. Um... So I grew up in the Wild West internet, saw all kinds of truly nasty stuff, much of which was by surprise, and I am not traumatized or desensitized. I have not been damaged or groomed. Oh, I'm, well, press X to doubt. The internet taught me how to have and enforce boundaries. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. I guarantee you it didn't. So I'm a bit skeptical to say the least about what's so dangerous and damaging about the internet for you. When I know I am my generation saw and encountered many worse things and escaped almost entirely unscathed. So, you are... You are creating a sort of appearance and essence distinction here. In, in the sense that the appearance of something as radical and subversive does not truly connote its lasting impact on something. These early internet shock sites that maybe you saw with your friend that sent you a link on MSN Messenger to get a rise out of you, that um, you sort, sort of view the same way as horror movies or uh, other forms of shock media. You know, that's, you know, I grew up watching death matches that I downloaded on LimeWire from CZW and from Japan, so I guess, you know, the difference between that and something that is within the very bloodstream of the public unconscious, which the internet largely is, that makes a world of difference. And this person will never understand those qualitative differences because uh, their ideological edifice is reliant upon total libertine um, social anarchy, social and cultural anarchy in its purest form. And like an egoic cultural anarchy that at one end enforces brutal social morality, secular and profaned, but on the other end preaches and venerates the most disgusting forms of hedonic treadmill, um, coom brain nonsense you've ever seen. So that's the difference. The internet taught me to have an enforced boundary. Yeah, right. So you're a bit skeptical. What I know in my generation saw and encountered many worse things and escaped. Yeah, many worse things, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure all of your generation was going 
on uh yeah first of all i doubt this claim that it's someone said back there um i doubt that it, you're entirely unscathed these effects are not well known but i'm sure you were watching rec threads on 4chan back in the day i'm i'm I, i'm looking at this uh account and i'm really sure of that anyways and i love how these zoomers are like glomming onto this to this thread the Maybe it's social media. I can't see the added pressure of online interaction with people you actually know being different than the anonymous, semi-anonymous world of pre-Facebook, early MySpace. I was 17, 18 when Facebook emerged, having family joining your college hangout. It was weird. But realistically, the internet is not hypersexual. Oh! 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 Bro! No, no, no! Um... It's such an insane claim. I've been on this since 2010. Yeah, I agree. They're just saying this proves that you... I hate to say this. I hate to... Con well, not that I hate con condemn anyone, you know. But this person is... Like, anyone who thinks this way has literally been given over to a reprobate mind. Literally. Because they think that their degree of what hypersexualization is is so high that nothing can compete. Like, I, I would I would really shudder to think of what Hellraiser hell eroticism, no, not even eroticism, let's say Desaudian exploitation that this person needs to go to in order to claim that hypersexuality is a thing. Um, I wonder what level that this person has to be on in order to be uncomfortable. But realistically, the internet is not <laughs> hypersexual. No more than people are in general. Yeah, right. Yes. I wonder what kind of negative feedback loop is lying present in that equation. See, this is the problem with like social libertarians and uh, social anarchists and cultural anarchists, I would say, is that it all comes down to a materialist basis for what you value things in. Your materialist framework is so reductionistic that there is no intangibility to it. There is no sort of, let's call it, ineffable feeling or metaphysical comportment that enters into the equation. So if I say to you that something is harmful on a spiritual level, you say that, oh, well, directly, materially, this thing does no harm. Therefore, it is right. Therefore, I can do it as long as, I don't know, my consent or whatever. We literally live in a different world than this person and people like that. Because from their point of view, they th see things as only a um, exchange of material bodily functions and ideational content and things that have no impact upon the soul because they don't, you know, believe in it. Um, you have a bevy, be, but realistically, the internet is not hypersexual, no more than people are in general. You have a bevy of tools at your disposal to curate an experience that suits your boundaries and tools to make brand new spaces if you still can't manage what you want. So if you don't like it, change the channel, man. It's not harming you, man. Yeah, 50 years of saying that. I wonder where it's got in society. Right? Oh, because those actions have no harmful consequences whatsoever. It's just, um, you know, creating profound amounts of misery and suffering and psychic hell, but oh, they have no problem with it, you know. Uh, they're not directly materially hurting anybody. Um, well, except for, you know, high rates of uh, depression and, uh, you know, the S-word and heroing and uh, just general uh, social ennui and uh, purposelessness and uh, drug addiction, and STDs, and so forth. But anyways, that's besides the point. So this person is essentially going back to the old, uh, if you don't like it, don't watch. It's like, the, first of all, it's like what E. Michael Jones says. When it comes to things like pornography, it's not a free speech, it's not a speech issue. It's a commerce, well, it's more than a commerce issue. But it was never treated as a speech issue. Because if you don't realize that there are certain forms of content that have an objective social harm, not from a basis of ideology per se, although it is ideological, but rather on the basis that we know things 
not just through our reason, but our intuition, certain things to be of a, let's call it for simplicity's sake, part of a natural law that goes beyond um, history and our human time itself. We know that certain things are destructive. Now we have a hyper-real medium that has blended all uh, forms of senses together, that is accessible 24 hours, that never stops, that is a rhizomatic connector, that is infinitely expanding, that is melding human experiences together for better and for worse. We have to realize this sort of ergogore that we're creating here with the internet. Because we've ne literally never had this outside of some kind of spiritual experience. We've never had this capacity for the numinous before that is a purely like external and material entity. Although I think that the internet has some very immaterial things to it, but that's all my own crazy, um, my own sort of crazy way of looking at things, but we've never had this capacity before. So now we're saying that the old medium of one dimensional, you know, you watch television, you receive the content. Those rules don't apply anymore, in my opinion. But that's, you know, it's going back to the same argument of, well, you know, if it doesn't harm you materially. Unfortunately, I don't see that. I see the expectation of guardianship and knowing where boundaries are being put on the other people. How am I to know what your boundaries are or why you entrust me, a total stranger to both term and respect them? Well, I trust God. I trust Christ. I trust good people who have uh, good values. But the thing is, we're literally children with, it's like giving a revolver to a monkey. A loaded revolver with a faulty pin. What's going to happen? There is no guidance nowadays. And people like you, millennials like you, have ensured that there is no guidance anymore. Because you bought into that snarky, pathetic, re proto-Reddit, like John Stewart era argument of, well, I guess it doesn't harm you, man, that you just learned from Gen X anyways. And now Zoomers have to pay the price. That, that form of uh, Zoomers are paying for the sins of thy forebears by having this attitude of, well, I guess it doesn't harm you, man. This feels to me like a lot of resentment about, oh yeah, so, yeah, incredibly filled with resentment that uh, you live in the most decadent time in human history and, and people are saying that maybe we have to have like a conversation about this insanity. Maybe we have to put the brakes on it. Maybe we have to truly look at ourselves as a species and say, are we ready for this? No, never, never. This feels to me like a lot of resentment about adulthood and adult response. Oh, 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 the boomer. Oh my God. Oh, you just not responsible enough. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, Zoomers aren't responsible, I, am, I admit. They're, they're the most infantilized generation in human history. You know who rivals them in terms of being infantilized? Us millennials. Yes. Okay, so don't give me this crap about how us high and mighty millennials that... You know, we, we navigated this deep, deep and dark, dangerous web that uh, we had, that, that made us into, yeah, we went to, it was our Nam. Those early shock sites were our Vietnam. And now we have this maturity and responsibility. This maturity of concepts and of life that we can in embark upon. You know why millennials are called the boomerang generation? Look it up. Look, that's an actual term. So this, this just rings so hollow, this whole thread. And I get that. Adulthood sucks and being responsible for yourself sucks too. Oh my God. It's like that, 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 um, that line in uh, the beginning of College Seawords by uh, MDE where Sam Hyde, he's like, Oh man, I hate school. Oh man, I hate high school. <laughs> he's like, Oh man, I hate college. It's like, that's, you know, that's the level of discourse. And being responsible for yourself sucks too. But I don't want internet parents. 
or corporate nannies and now they should okay so here's the thing the people that are talking about this uh let's see we don't want the corporations to censor either because they're the ones who have wreaked havoc upon our psyches they're the ones who condone it we're not talking about corporate nannies here but note but again this is the same old basic crap libertarian argument about like oh well you want the you know it's like the the uh the left libertarian like the corporations and the government man like that's corporations are not your friend neither are nation states or religious political <laughs> yeah okay agree agree disagree agree disagree um and all of them, each and every one, desperately wants to control you, see what you do, man. So, uh, you know why this is so stupid? You know why this, like, old-school, left-wing version of conspiratoid thinking? That you, you watch John Stu as a millennial, you watch John Stewart, maybe you, like, read the Wikipedia page of, on, uh, on Manufacturing Consent by Noam Chomsky. You know why this is so stupid? Because, let's see. The nation state is being destroyed, but it's condoning what you want. Religions are almost entirely irrelevant in terms of their impact on dying Western civilizations. Political parties, in a lot of ways, basically just green light what you want. You know, I mean, is there really truly a right wing party in the West? Maybe in Europe, maybe in certain parts of uh, Asia. But in North America, please. And all of these, in each and every one, desperately want to control what you see, what you do, man. And you're just giving it away because sex is icky. <laughs> and being responsible is scary. Oh my God. This is literally, like, this person never grew up from being an edgy teenager. That's literally what this is. Okay, but my older friends tell me to watch beheading videos. <laughs> Mess them up. Oh. Oh, wow. So, this again, this is just the juvenile, like, ironic Reddit, nerdwazee living as an eternal adolescence forever. You know, it's funny. I think the one uh, thinker of ironies who recently denounced me, he did have one good point, I remember, this one tweet where he said that... No, I, no, it wasn't him. I think it was Reality Gamer that said that adolescence is, like, the perfect age for these people because it's... The lack of responsibility still. It's just getting on its way towards maturity and responsibility. But it's not there yet. And you're still forgiven for acting like a stupid child. That is literally... Like, adolescence is literally... Like, your college years are just deferred adulthood. And literally, that is what millennials pioneered. And that is what we geared every single facet of the culture industry towards. Is eternal adolescence. From the clothes we wear... The shows we watch, what we're nostalgic for, everything. Our experiences, the workplace even, they're all to mutually reinforce our adolescent picture of reality. And this bitter old aging millennial crow wants to say to you, this, this heron wants to say to you, is it Herod in her hair? That, oh, well, you know, you gotta just lighten up, man. Because you think sex is icky. You're just like Ben Shapiro. It's like, get, get, give me a break. Give me a break. I'm so sorry the world is not sweetness and light. Oh, so. The, the world is not, yeah, I'm but I'm sure your world is, uh, you consider it to be this campy, um, pastel nightmare that is, you know, so hecking chonker wholesome, Ron Swanson epic bacon. That's what millennials are right there. I'm so sorry the world's not sweet and lightness where everyone always does the right thing and is properly respected and always acts in the best interest of others. This is not the real world, man. It's full of selfish assholes who don't want to care about other people. Like you. You don't want to care about other people. You know why? Because real love for someone or for a group of people or for a nation... Uh, in, in the higher sense of a people, is not enabling them to do wrong. That's that's the opposite of love. So, there you have it. If you're lucky, you'll find some people who are only assholes some of the time. Notice, this is just gaslighting and psychologizing at this point. 
which is what these people do best, and will care about you more than themselves. Like, I, I shouldn't even bother to read any of this. This is stupid. But try to mask their presence. It does make them go away or become better people. It just gives them a way to hide in plain sight. Um, so yeah, I don't buy this damage, but still fighting moral crusader line. For someone who lived through an even wider, wild, yeah, an even wilder internet. Yeah, I'm sure. It rings completely false and plays right in the hands of the worst kinds of manipulators. Ooh, evil religion. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you don't want these people in charge. Trust me. Yeah, you really lived through Gilead, didn't you? Remember when, remember when we win. These people want you broke, dead, your children, you know what, and brainwashed, and they'll laugh at you for it. Yeah, you don't want these people. Trust me. And this is delicious right here. It's bad enough Jeff Bezos owns a major newspaper. Now imagine putting Carrie's mother in charge of keeping the internet clean. Carrie's mother? Who is that? Carrie's mother. What What is this reference? Is that... Oh, the film... Oh, okay. Yeah, Ke Oh, yeah, that's right. She was some kind of... Uh, notice how Stephen King... And, and you, know, you know, Orange Man really broke his brain, too. Stephen King wrote these over-the-top religious characters. He really ruined people. He really psyoped um, American Protestantism to be like these, uh, carry, you know, Margaret White, um, these, like, over-the-top evangelical, like, hate hateful characters. Uh, he really, like, ruined a whole generation of readers when it comes to Christianity in America. Um, and make no mistake, that's what you'll get. Yeah, good, bring it on. It will be the Hayes Code. Only much, much worse. Oh my god, the Hayes Code. For those of you who don't know, the Hayes Code was a self-imposed industry self-guidance for all motion pictures. Yeah, guess what? Hollywood flourished under the Hayes Code. Under the Catholic Hayes Code, Hollywood flourished. And then when the uh, certain people got rid of it in Hollywood, look what happened. <laughs> like, this, oh my god. Jeff Bezos wants what you want. All of the smut, all of the disgusting propaganda is green. How many articles in the Washington Post are there about how uh, divorce is self-care and polyamory is great? How many articles? Ter just please, give me a, give me a, uh. I'm going to Fed Post right now. Is this over almost? Almost. We're almost there. And before you say it won't get that far, that's not what you're talking about. That's what it will end. Yeah, good. Bring on the Hayes Code. Bring it on. We need the Butlerian J word. You know, anyways, that's where it will end because that's where it always will end. History tells us this. Yeah, yeah. You know why history tells us this? Because there are certain perennial truths about the nature of existence. You know, this is why people shouldn't black pill. Because us people on the right us people who are maybe not traditionalists, but us people who are, um, have sort of a more ancient system of existence, more sort of, let's call it primordial ontology in mind. At the end of the day, the Kali Yuga will end. Civilizational winter will be over and we will win. We just have to give it time because time, the mother of time is on our side. History tells us that. Yeah. History does tell us this. And we will be vindicated over ghouls that believe in this stuff. If you want a clean internet experience without the blackjack uh, and hook, it's called build your own platform. Yeah. Yeah. Build your own platform until they shut it down. Yeah. Really great. Oh, you just build your own internet. Please. I don't know what the last 20 years that went from most common solution to an internet problem to a non-option. It's a non-option because people like you made it a non-option. Okay, because people like you that help have a helping hand in running these social media companies, the millennial HR department and marketing executives and all the people that really make the decisions of these companies, they're the ones that make it almost impossible to have any rival and alternative to the monopoly. 
So this whole thing about build your own internet site, build your own GeoCities again, that's crap. That That is so unrealistic. That is such a condescending bullshit answer that I, I shouldn't even be here justifying it by reading it. But we need to go back to that. You don't like Twitter policies? Cool. Go make your own site. Yeah, what about Gab? What about, you know, whatever? Like, they all got crushed. Same with AO3 and they'll even get you the source code. You're not helpless. You have options and tools that we just slowly take away from you, but you won't use them. You can't, Yeah, we won't use them because you took them away. You Because Google helped take them away. Because Google will just bury any alternative to the monopoly for hate speech. You can't ha have whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. Build it yourself for you. People like you go forth and prosper and leave me alone. There's more than enough internet for the both of us. Um, our peer mentions. Yeah, I wonder why. Maybe because. Oh God, look at this. Look at this. <sighs> pop culture. Pop culture. Pop. Po oh wow. Terrible. Terrible. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, kiddo. Blame twelve-year-olds for being traumatized by the internet. <laughs> Oh my god. This is amazing. And go build your own space for younger people who think the internet is problematic like you're getting a solution to your prop. Whatever. With total righteous helplessness is one of the most worrying elements of the whole wave hand issue here. They have internalized corporate surveillance and control of the public spaces themselves. You beg for corporate tr control and surveillance. You love it. You know why? Because people can't say gamer words on the internet anymore because of that. You look at this bio. Look, look at this right here. Look at this. Look at that. You love this. The corporations love you. You're a childless cog. You're a cog in the system. They love you because you are entirely devoted to their culture, industry, brands, and to their ability to enforce the mutually participatory panopticon environment of the internet. You love it. You wouldn't even be around. If it wasn't for this corporate control and sanitization of the internet. That's the ultimate thing, is that these people, they actually believe that, the, oh, the evil corporations, man. No, they're on your side. Uh, listen, I, I'm just, I'm just getting too angry right now. I should just leave this alone. Let's go back to some of the replies. I'm going to go to some of the uh, major ones. Let's go back. Is Twitter down, actually? I don't know. People were just saying that. <sighs> oh, my God. Ah, yeah, Marquita Passad, my boy. Go and follow Marquita Passad. Growing up online when you can jack out anytime. And internet slash real life have a sharp dividing line between them and growing up online where you're in a mandatory decentralized social panopticon are two different things. Yes, amazing tweet. Amazing tweet. Absolutely bodied, absolutely KO'd, just like Zack Saber Jr. got KO'd last night by Tomohiro Ishii, ruining his streak. Um, let's see if this person is based. <laughs> Broad prevalence of people with no idea. The internet is infinitely more sanitized, puritanical. Yeah, it's infinitely more sanitized and puritanical because of people like this, not because of some. A mythical, like, really, what? You think the religious right from the 80s controls the internet? Come on. Oh, my boy, Tiff Baller fan. Yes. The difference between Zaniels and Zoomers, both of whom grew up online, is that the former experienced the degenerate internet as a transgressive alternative to interact so society with the neurotypicality and heteronormativity pair bonding understood the normal state of affairs. Um, censorship, yes, my boy, nightmare vision, God closed my eyes. If I was a pro wrestler, that would be my finishing move. That's a cool name for a finishing move. Probably just, it'll probably just be like an elbow that drags you to the canvas face first. I don't know. Um, censorship aside, the entire assumption behind this thread is that this woman somehow survived the crazy old internet, but she didn't even survive the supposedly sanitized new one. She has pronouns in her bio. <laughs> totally suck. Totally. <laughs> Let me respond. How am I going to respond here? 
totally psyoped. <laughs> um, <laughs> this person thinks, yeah. You're, you're looking at a live ship posting, ladies and gentlemen. This person thinks some mythical. Religious right controls. Mandatory disc discursive policing by social media. I'm using OPSEC language by social media co companies. Lamau. I know this is like so unenthusiastic when I'm actually reading it, but there you go. There you go. She, they, most be like a room of the internet turned up fine. <laughs> Another one of my good friends, Eel. I've been following this man for years. Go and follow 8 Eel, 8 Ideal, please. These kids really think they're the first generation doing everything or what? <laughs> oh my god. My buddy, Rody. Shout out to my boy, Rody. He's a, another good friend of mine. Technological alienation is accelerated by the generational gaps in wording. The internet by the point wasn't the Wild West. It was Native Americans watching Columbus arrive and being happy for a new trading partner. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Fandom mom picker, Abby Icon. Oh, This thread, all this, I'm never should you want nannies online, never. I'm Gen X, I'm so cool and hip. Oh my god. Oh, a lot of youths, yes! Another good follower of mine. What damaged romantic and sexual relationships for younger generation was the internet development and outsourcing of your liberal feminist chic ideology that groomed girls into adopting a warped sexual openness while ventilizing boys for daring to make a romantic connection. Yes, 100% agree. You've all been saying this. There you go. Props out to my friend, default friend. <sighs> we got some wild stuff. Shut up, millennial. <laughs> we have no problem with it, but this generation does. Look, <laughs> Randy. Oh my god. This dismissive <laughs> Oh, look at these names. The dismissive condescending tone of this thread shows exactly why teens don't listen to us. I'm 26 and I I'm yeah, I'm 26 and grew up online, but our version of it was different from what Gen Z has now. We weren't required to have constant connection they have. This is an escape for them. Yes, my buddy hopeful abandon! Follow my boy, hopeful abandon. He's a great dude. He's been on BTR. Shout out, mwah, love him to death. You're right. It wasn't the internet that damaged Zoomer sexuality. It was people like you. And yes, yes. In fact, the internet sh is shit now because of people like you. You took good things and fucked things up and groomed and gaslit and sold quarter of my generation. You worthless fucking e-boomer. Uh, uh, uh. uh, uh. Oh, God, I'm getting worked up here. My buddy Stain Haynes. My good man, Stain Haynes. I love you, my brother. Impression, go follow 718 TV right now. Go and follow him. Look at his excellent podcast with Monoxus. He is the greatest living IRL ship poster in the world. I, I love you, brother. Impressed how this hy hysterical and neurotic pig sublimates your crisis of confidence and desperate appeal to kids these days. Comparing pre-9-11 dial-up internet to the global algorithm-driven marketing and surveillance mind control grid is underwhelmingly <laughs> retarded. Oh, couldn't have said it better myself, my man. Couldn't have said it, could not have said it. Oh my god, I'm getting, I, I'm getting, I'm getting chills. <laughs> that was from that ventrilo harassment video. Yeah, Dr. Rupert. Another great follower. He followed me for a long time. Go and follow Dr. Rupert, Rupert Von Rip. The difference between that and Extremely Online Circuit 2000 was very limited experience as opposed to today. And I say this as someone who spent too much time on the internet playing things like UO. What is UO? Um, is that Unreal? No, that's... 
and you left this hellscape when you went to anything at all IRL. Being an elementary school, the classroom showed me rotten.com. Oh, yeah, that's totally comparable to what we have nowadays. This is the best thread in a long while. <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, see, notice all these people are just the nerd wazee. That's, that's all it is. They are the nerd wazee. Love the Zoomer quotes of this, um, but grooming is more common now. So it wasn't openly known. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sure that you lived through your um, Dr. Phil millennial mythology about the, uh, you know, the, the MySpace uh, predators. But it's a lot more common now than you think because now that you've accepted what they consider grooming, you think it's hip and cultural and that it should be celebrated. But you just call it something by a different name ideologically. But, it, you know first gen to grow up online you're just the first gen to exp expect everyone else to wipe your ass for you online lamal <laughs> oh my god oof yes totally real name online for young age weirds like me <laughs> as an elder millennial a second oh, notice how uh they they have no 18 i wonder why they have to um why do people in the that have pronouns why why do they have to uh put that no person who's 18 or younger i wonder why i wonder why they have a problem with that i don't see anyone else i see furries that have that warning i see people of a certain uh, brahmin caste identity that have that warning i wonder why anyways that's neither here nor there as an elder millennial i say these younger generations are suffering from head and ass syndrome yeah see this is just boomer cadence millennials have just become the boomers but with less money, less numbers, less job opportunities, less economic output, um, less cohesion, less family life, less everything. We're just spiritually boomers. That's it. We were, we were the generation that was psyoped by the internet instead of being psyoped by television. But they really don't know about all this shit you could see without warning back then. Online gaming suddenly seeing, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, Call of Duty, the, the, the lobby, we survived that, you know. Back when you could uh, say gamer words and call people, you know, F slurs. The wild wet. It, all the millennial, we need to talk about the way some of us apparently slipping a conservative rhetoric, giving you an argument is more or less I survive in an abusive environment. So dare the next generation discuss my problems. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, I agree with this one. This is good. Ironically enough, this is just like the same old like libertarian, you know, um, Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Don't be a crybaby. Uh, like, don't be a snowflake, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I've had too much fun tonight, even though the subject matter is terrible. My voice is going hoarse. Um, I'm getting ready for tomorrow. I don't know when this will be uploaded, but on BTR, we're having a mental... <laughs> ironically enough, for <laughs> after this, we're having a mental health stream with... Um, Paul Town, my good friend Paul Town, and uh, Max Durant, the YouTuber, really amazing YouTube video essayist. So, you know, I'm not going to end. I'm going to end on a mutual here. Um, Aleb, uh, did he used to follow me? Anyways, I, doesn't matter. That's a good peppy right there. Hi, wizard here. Elder wizard, actually. Uh, we need to talk about baby witches. I know this may shock you, but we had magic books staying that when I was eight. You were not the first to cast hexes on the moon. <laughs> so with that out of the way, like I said, like, share, subscribe. You got me. I, I was going off a little bit in this video. Please, God bless and mm, goodbye.